All right, so I'm sitting here on vacation, mind my own business, when a YouTube video shows up on the uh, about the average 401k by some guys that uh, run a YouTube channel, and they're kind of scolding people. How dare you only have this average account balance? You're 50 years old. How dare you? It's kind of like Greta Thunberg. I friggin' hate that crap. I hate it. I hate it. So I had to respond on this Memorial Day because uh, the whole thing is just freaking stupid. So they're using the balance from Fidelity. All right. Then you can go in the Vanguard. They use a balance from Vanguard. Two completely separate things. Huh, how ironic. Why would Vanguard and Fidelity be so off in their average balances for a 50-year-old? We'll just use that for an example. How dare you? And the scold comes down like, you need five times. If you're 50 years old, you need five times your income, blah, blah, blah. Just, I, I, the whole thing is freaking nuts, man. Just fear mongering to get you to save more. No clue at all about freaking what you're going to need in retirement. Nothing at all. Just fear mongering to get you to feel bad for yourself and kick in the butt. Say, I can't retire because I don't have five times income according to these guys on YouTube. Uh, and the fidelity average balance uh, doesn't give me enough. And I guarantee a lot of you don't even have the fidelity average balance. I guarantee you that. What if I'm not going to be able to retire? And I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of the scolds that are trying to tell you you better save up because you're a bad person for not saving up. They hadn't read Spend Until the End. I can tell you right now. They hadn't read, read Spend Until the End by Scott Burns. I'm not the biggest fan of Scott Burns, by the way. I, mean, I think Scott Burns is a fear monger himself when it comes to climate change and COVID. In terms of the uh, financial stuff, though, uh, I am a fan of Scott Burns. Eh, I mean, for the most part. Uh, Kotlikoff, Larry Kotlikoff over at BU, you know, he's an economics professor. And uh, other than Kotlikoff, uh, BU doesn't have a glorious not notoriety on their economics graduates, i.e. AOC. But Kotlikoff is a good guy. And I like him. I actually interviewed him many moons ago for my YouTube channel, uh, my podcast I was doing back uh, when I first started off. Uh, so I like Kalikov. I've been a big fan of Kalikov for many moons. He's a big lib, but uh, I still think in, in this case, he and Burns had, had set the stage with spend until your end a consumption smoothing. All right, so listen, I'm 50. I do not have 401k balance of over, I think the one guy was saying 250000 I think Vanguard has a much lower as too, I think it is actually. Um, I don't have that in my 401k. What does that mean? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be destitute? No. You know why? You know why? Because your average 401k balance has nothing to do with me specifically. You can put your average 401k balance in your freaking pipe and smoke it. You can kick it because it matters not to you. Average 401k balances for other people is irrelevant to you. It really is relevant. Now think about it. Too. On top of that, how does Fidelity and Vanguard find, get this, this data? Well, they can't look at your specific stuff. My account's at Schwab, man. I got two accounts, M1 and Schwab. How would freaking these guys at Fidelity Vanguard know what my account balance is? Yeah, they don't. They can't. No, There's no uh, place you can research this stuff. You can look at IRS data for sure, and you can say, okay, of the amount of people who file a 401k, uh, this is the average balance. How's the, does the IRS even publish that in their tax the things I don't think so. Yeah, they might. Okay, well, that is, what does that mean exactly? Because the average is irrelevant, frankly. You can even look at the median, but you can't know for sure. So remember, Vanguard. I did a video on this a couple years ago. Vanguard said the average IRA balance is like fifty thousand bucks. All right. Well, they they literally what they did is they took their number of IRA accounts divided by the uh, the the total asset base of their all their IRAs divided by the number of accounts that gave the average IRA balance. That nothing. That meant if you had three different accounts at Vanguard. So let's say it, the average IRA account balance at Vanguard, we'll just say it's 50000 bucks. So everyone's like, oh my goodness, we're all going to die. No one's going to be, we have no money. Well, what the problem was, what if I had three different accounts at Vanguard? An account A, account B, and account C. You know what I'm saying? So my average account balance was 50000 bucks, but my totality of my Vanguard IRAs was 150000 bucks. You see that? How stupid that is. So the same thing here with Fidelity. So some accounts just start, you just left your company, you roll that to an IRA, you have 150000 from your previous crap little job, you roll that to an IRA over at Vanguard, now you're just starting out at a new 401k with you know 3000 bucks. How does that factor into your average Fidelity IRA account balance or 401k balance? Well, inherently the 150000 you rolled over to Vanguard won't be part of that conclusion, man. It's, the whole thing is just stupid. Stop freaking focusing on this. Don't listen to people who scold you because this has nothing to do with you. 
Secondly, these guys are saying, oh, my goodness, you know, you're only going to be able to retire 60 percent of your pre-retirement income. Is that good or bad? That's that's a completely meaningless discussion to have unless you can figure out for you what you need. Oh, my goodness. The average needs 80 percent of pre-retirement income. How do you what does that have to do with me? Whoa, that's the average. Well, the average is not me. I am not average. I'm me. I'm Josh. You are you. You're not average. And the average is irrelevant. It's irrelevant in this regard, because what me matters is what I need. Stop focusing on this. I'm begging on this Memorial Day. People did not die in war and get maimed in war. So you could sit there, freaking go to your crappy little job just like, and just be miserable, get fat and unhappy, come home to work, and be freaking crying to your spouse because your job stinks, because you're being harassed by a boss, because of white guilt, because of Robin D'Angelo, because what you're not, whatever, whatever. You did not sit in traffic an hour and a half each way. Listen to people on the radio are getting you mad. Listen to 1980s music where you should never listen to anyway because that will make you insane. You did not sit on this world to do that. And people didn't freaking die for your freedom on Memorial Day to freaking do that. And I hate to even say freedom because, my goodness, did, did we really free people when we sent them off to war in Vietnam, Iraq, Americans freaking in, uh, uh, in World War II, World War I? Of course not. The Philippines, the Spanish. I mean, none of this, man. It's stupid. Stupid. Never mind conscripting people. I'll do another video on that. How I despise, despise. Ugh. Anyway, that's not what. <laughs> freaking, if you want to pay tribute, be happy in the freedom that you have established in America, man. Now, there was freedom was not free. It was based on the blood of people who fought for the Civil War and the uh, Revolutionary War, I grant you. But it certainly wasn't free because of, you know, 58,000. Seven men of 58,000, I think it was men, and then seven women who died in Vietnam. Even though I freaking got nothing but the most utmost respect for those people. Uh, a lot of them were conscripted, which is, I, I'm just not going to go into it. My, infer my fury at that is, is holds no bounds because it's just the idea that your freedom is contingent on whether or not a government entity says they can draft you and send you off to war. And if you don't, you go to jail. That's freaking nuts, man. Screw that. But anyway, I had nothing to do. I'm going on a tangent because I just get so frustrated when I hear about it. Yeah, I'll put another, I'll, I'll do another one on Memorial Day. I got to stop this because it really infuriates me. Anyway, stop letting it be get under your skin. Like, I don't have enough because these guys on YouTube are scolding me saying I didn't start. It. Look, man, I got four kids, dude. All right, we got a mortgage, we got bills to pay, we got freaking auto insurance, we got, you know, a bigger house that we'll need when we retire, you know, we got to help, we, we try our best to help, and sports activities aren't cheap, you know, broken bones aren't cheap, all that stuff. There's no way I can be saving like a freaking banshee when I'm 25 years old. When I wasn't making any money, I got freaking children, man. It's not going to, I had car loans, we had our own student loans, I mean, give me a freaking break. That's why I spent to the end is the best book, because you realize, oh, we've been sold a lie. A lie by the financial industry to scare you so you save more money and pay more fees. It's, it's inherently so obvious, man. So obvious, so contradictory that don't listen to these people. All right, love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.